Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today we're going to focus on fave icon design and implementation. So you might be thinking, why the hell are we focusing on a fave icon tutorial? Well, it's a 16 by 16 graphic, not much to it, but it's something that we all should definitely have integrated on our website because it's just another area that we can reinforce our identity. All right, so basically we're going to focus on two different aspects. Basically focusing on saving and implementing the actual fave icon and then also briefly cover best fave icon design principles. All right, so if you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com and if you have not yet subscribed here on YouTube, do that. Let's get started. All right, so basically there are two ways to save fave icons and usually most people would just use a web-based service or a web page uh, to actually save the ICO file. Uh, the second way is to install this Photoshop plugin that will allow you to save in the ICO format. So by default, let's create a new real quick 16 by 16 uh, document here. And if we go to file save as, we'll see that down here in our potential file extensions, ICO is not available. All right, so I'm gonna close out Photoshop and basically, if you come up here, you click on, click on the download the latest version here, uh, you will have this zip file, and it contains this plugin right here. So basically, I am using the 64-bit version. Now, it gives you some installation instructions. Uh, for me, I'm using the 64-bit Photoshop CC, and in the plugins folder, it tells you on their website to put it in plugins slash uh, file formats, but that's not actually, that doesn't exist. <laughs> so what I found is just by dragging it right here, I'm gonna hit continue. Now it's in here. And once we reload Photoshop, we'll see that if we create a new quick document, Control Shift S for file save as, come down here and now we have the ICO Windows icon format all right so basically it's a real quick and easy obviously so instead of using a web-based service or some web page to take an existing like like a PNG file or something and converting it I uh, you know if you have Photoshop it's makes pretty much it, it, it's a no-brainer for certain just to get this installed that way you don't have to mess around with other web pages uh, for some reason when you select it though it it adds like this <laughs> ridiculous uh, parenthesis at the end. But anyhow, um, so now that you know how to save an actual ICO file, it's really important to understand, you know, how to best design an ICO. So really, it's kind of difficult if if your if your visual identity is kind of off uh, from the start to to create a good ICO file. So because ideally, I uh, when you design your logo design and you're you're coming up with your your company's identity design you will have started off with some sort of simple or simplistic uh, mark or, or association with your brand that could be easily put into an ico so let me just show you real quick what i'm talking about uh, i'm going to give this just a background color here just a random dark blue and a lot of people, uh, especially those that are inexperienced designers, they'll come up with a like a real complex logo, for example, and they'll try to stick it and use it as their actual ICO. Now, this is only 16 by 16, so what becomes visible, what's visible at a larger scale, uh, really will quickly become unreadable at such a small 16 by 16 size. If we're at 1,200, this is basically what you have to work with. So I'll just show you real quick what I mean. If I just take the type tool and hit like ABC, it's only three letters to work with. I put that in the middle and then I'll save this as an ICO.
I'll call it faveicon.ico. I already have one in there. And just hit OK. And then real quickly, also for the HTML for an ICO, I'm going to show you quickly what that looks like. And that is in here. So basically you have your standard HTML uh, right here and the ICO goes in between the head tag. All right, so the two basic lines of code that you have to concern yourself with are right here. Link relic will shortcut icon, href is basically where you saved your fave icon.ico and then type equals image dash x dash icon. So basically take both of these, the only difference is just this adds the shortcut uh, attribute there. So basically that's all you need to do in order to test to see what your ICO file looks like. So if I right click and open this, all right, let me refresh that. Uh, as you can see, you could just barely read out ABC. So I uh, Ideally, you will have some type of identifying mark or symbol that is simple enough and readable uh, and reviewable at small sizes. So, you know, my upcoming visual identity design course, you know, really goes into that because one of the core tenets that makes up a good logo design is it readable at smaller scales or sizes. So uh, let me go ahead and come down here, go back to Photoshop. And so one thing you can also play around with is the uh, you take an alpha background or transparent. Let me just choose this color. And if I save that as the ICO file, overwrite it, hit OK, come back to the browser, refresh this, we can see that you know you don't necessarily have to have it filled in with color. So still, when it comes to a good ICO file, this is not good because it's hardly re readable. So let me just show you an example. We'll use the custom shape tool and just one of these random shapes, very simple. Uh, let me go ahead and just get rid of that. Oops, save for web, ICO, faveicon.ico, hit OK, and then refresh. Now when it comes to the visibility of this icon file or fave icon opposed to the other one, we can tell exactly what it is and it's a very easy identifying mark. So uh, when it also comes to the other browsers, of course, this works just the same. As we see here in Firefox, this by the way is Chrome up here, Firefox. And one thing that I thought was interesting and I ran into, uh, and of course in typical fashion, Internet Explorer was a pain in the ass. Uh, let's see here. I think I have like adware and spyware. I never use Internet Explorer. But still, what I found is that if I try to open up the the local file on my hard drive, uh, it did not work. Like, where is the ICO file? Well, what I had to do was actually upload it to an actual website. And then I found it worked. I'm doing that off screen real quick designcourse.com damn this stupid java thing see and let me that was a previous one from the other see i think it's cached that's the issue so anyhow as you see you know in, in an actual real world, world environment if you have it loaded up in and i on the actual website it will work in internet explorer as well all right, so yep, very quick and easy tutorial on ICO files, how to save them, uh, and also best practices for them. Simple is better for sure. All right, so today, yeah, that was kind of a quick tutorial. Uh, my dad is having heart surgery today, so I had to bust just a simple one out real quick. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with another video tutorial, and check out designcourse.com. Wait, you know what? I'm going to show you guys real quick uh, a preview 
of the course I'm working on. So let me uh, get out designcourse.com and I'm going to go to here. And this is uh, just the beginning portion of what it will look like when you actually have access to the visual identity design course. So if I click on this, we have the course content and I've requested feedback from some people um, and I've given them access to this. But basically there's going to be a lot more lessons here. This is just kind of quick. As you can see, these each one of these are very quick. Uh, but if I load this up. So a, a lot of these videos right here, I went, I, I did a lot of work in trying to illustrate, uh, instead of just having me talk on the video, but yeah, working on that hard, hopefully within a month, maybe a month and a half, it'll all be done. And you will certainly receive an email when that is ready. All right. So check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet and subscribe here on YouTube.